What's up, Internet? So in this video, we're doing a quick update on our pop-up valve. Um, as you might have seen, we did make some changes to it recently. So we're just going to go over what was changed, why, and what you should know about it. So let's get into it. So this is our original pop-up valve, and this is the new updated one. So the first thing to know is that it does not change the performance of your gun. The stem portion of the valve is exactly the same with both of them. It is the only changes to the seat, which is how it basically interfaces with the rear cylinder. Also, the new valve is worse compatible with the old valve. So if you have an older engine, this valve will still work on it all the way back to a Gen 1. So no worries there. Um, all right, so basically the changes are with the old system, or old design, this would drop into your center cylinder. Then your retaining ring would go on top of it, so pop into a groove. And then you screw the center cylinder at the rear cylinder, or we get pinched between the two and create a seal. So that's cool, but it does require us to be very critical of tolerances. If we get out of tolerance by basically two thousandths of an inch, it can cause issues. So it's a little more difficult to manufacture that way. So the changes to the new one makes it easier to manufacture, so easier for us. It also is easier for working on the, on the system. You can take it out and out of the gun, or in and out of the engine, without having to remove the sewer ring, because it's no longer there. So what we're going to do now is actually show you the process of pulling out an old pop valve and putting a new pop valve into it. So you can see how the interface of the system and how everything goes. Okay, so if you've watched our full tutorial on how to disassemble and reassemble the Fusion engine, it's the same basic tools to take out pop valve as shown in that video. It's going to be a 3 thirty-six Allen wrench, a small flathead, and an O-ring tool. So to start, we're going to take our 3 thirty-six Allen wrench and take out the pinhead screw on the front of the Fusion engine. Now, first off, it is a kind of cool feature. With this system, you can actually do this while the engine is still in the gun. With something like a VFC M4, where the bumper tube's not actually screwed into the back of the receiver, back of the engine. Um, you don't even have to take the stock off to do this. If you have a rear TM spec where it's gonna you know, thread through in the back of the rear cylinder, you might have to take that out, loosen your grip a little bit just to allow the engine to move a little bit uh, while you're taking it apart. But it is still possible to do it while it's in the gun. So here we go. Take the screw out. Okay, and it's good to actually kind of lift this up a little bit, give them the room. Use our flathead, come in through here, and loosen this banjo thing. Now the screw is captured on the other side by an O-ring, so it's not going to come all the way out. You're just loosening it until it basically comes away from the cylinder. Like that. All right, so that's the front one. We'll take the rear one out through this hole here. You can actually, like, pinch the line through the sides of your fingers to kind of hold it in place and loosen it. All right. Now that that's separated, we can unscrew the front and center cylinders from the rear. And inside there's going to be the spring. So if it comes out, just pop back in. There's a little boss in there that fits on top of, and that's all it's really keeping it centered. So that's good there. All right. So this is the old pop of valve. So again, it's held in place by that 19 by two retaining ring. So we're gonna take our O-ring pick tool and basically we want you to slide it in between the base and the O-ring. Don't want to scratch the surface because that can create a leak. All right, so basically just kind of get in it, pop it out. Once that's removed, you just grab all the end of it pull straight out. So that's that one. So you can just kind of demonstrate a little bit more. So field style, so our ring is like this. And when you put the, eh, stick the spring out, make it a little easier. Okay. So we install the center and front cylinder on the rear cylinder. It's gonna drop into here. And this is going to get pinched between the rear cylinder and the center cylinder to create a seal right there. With this new one, we're actually creating a seal here to the inner bore of the rear cylinder. So it really just slides in and creates a seal. So much simpler design, it's a lot easier to work with, and maybe easier to make. All right, so literally all I'm going to do here, put spring back in. Hey.
There we go. Gives me the thing. Okay, so to install this, obviously it's the same as shown in the video. I'm gonna grease the very front tip of the stem, this shoulder right here, and this sail o ring. You don't need to grease these o rings here. You could make it slide a little easier, but usually it's a pretty good fit, so you don't have to. So all we're gonna do is just drop right in the center cylinder, pops in. Don't need to put that o ring back in. This one you don't need anymore. So leave that out and then just screw this into the rear cylinder. State that, make sure that the, the base of the pop valve goes inside the spring. Like that. Just snug that down. And there's a little over rotation, so just make sure, like, before you try putting the screws back in, this surface here is all this surface, it makes it a little easier when line things up. But right now, you have to put these panja fittings back into their holes. So you can actually pull it to the side, get it out of the way. And then stick this guy down to this hole. Make sure that o ring's still there. And getting kind of grip on the sides with the line to hold it in place. Line up with the hole and then tighten it down. Now it should go in very easily. If you're finding you have to like really force it, you're probably cross threading the threads. So back out, recenter, try it again. You can actually turn the screw backwards to find the holes a little easier or find the threads easier and then tighten it down. But if you're forcing it, you're doing something wrong, so stop. <laughs> All right, so that's the rear one. So you can, again, pinch on those lines, hold everything in place as you snug it down. You don't have to be like really tight, it's going down against the O-ring, so it doesn't have to be a lot of force to do it. You just snug it down, that's all it is. All right, so the rear one's done. And our front one, same basic method. Just gotta line up the hole, hold it in place. There we go. And then you just line up the bandage fitting with that hole. Might have to rotate the cylinder a bit. Drop it down. And install your screw. All right, slow it down and we're all done. Pretty simple, right? So just a couple things to note. This is a brand new change. So there are a lot of fusion engines on the market. It will take a while for the new valve to filter through what's already out there. So if you get a system that has an old valve in it, don't be worried about. Again, no change in performance. Just makes it easier to assemble and work with. But just want to let you know, in case you get a new valve and you're wondering what the heck is this thing, now you know why it's different. But if you have any questions, comment below, send us an email, be happy to help you out, and uh, see you next time. Later.